when you put all of these standards into practice, people work together a bit better. Hmm. Interesting. That sounds intriguing. Can you give some examples of this, uh, such kind of standards? Well, the most obvious one, and which most people have heard of is IFC. IFC is, I think, one of the, the, the broadest scope of uh, the broadest standard out there, and it's an international standard. It's, it's, uh, it's an ISO standard, which describes a set of agreements of what objects exist, what to call those objects, what properties can be uh, stored with those objects, and um, what relationships those objects can have with other objects. and I think most people have heard of IFC, and it's it's one of the the broadest scope um, is the best way to describe it. Because I think one people what people don't realize is that there are actually many standards you can follow, but often their scope is limited to a certain uh, discipline or use case. Whereas IFC is is quite unique in that it covers a huge um, part of the of the of the industry. And that's probably, and, and, and for that, it's probably a good reason to be familiar with it. Mm -hmm. I see. And not only that, but uh, IFC, it's also uh, adopted or recommended by, uh, by the ISO 19650 as well, right? And uh, of course, it's, uh, it's endorsed. Can we say that it's endorsed by Building Smart as well, right? Well, I hope it's endorsed by Building Smart, considering that they're doing a lot of the work on it. <laughs> but, oh, <laughs> so, so yes, <laughs> let's, let's say it's endorsed by them. Okay, so they are doing a lot of work uh, on it. Uh, they, I what, think they created. They yeah. <laughs> what should I know? What What somebody who is uh, who doesn't know anything about this should know about this? What is relevant? Well, the first thing is to. Um, yeah, first thing is to realize who's working on it. It is building smart. <laughs> so um, it, I got so if you ever want, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you want to know like the most official descriptions of IFC and where to find out more information, building smart is the, the best place to go to. Um, you know, they, they are the guys who are creating the ISO standard. Uh, however, a word of warning that let's just say the, the documents provided by building smart can be a little bit technical. And it can be difficult to understand if you don't have a background in um, in uh, software development. So an alternative is to check out uh, the OS Arch Wiki. And we've got a series of pages, which are uh, still, still a bit of work in progress, but we've made a good start, uh, which will show you the beginnings of what IFC is. So the first one we're going to talk about today is an introduction to IFC, but I guess you can read ahead on that. And I'll keep this on, on the back of my screen so you can read as I talk. And this is uh, what IFC is. It's a set of agreements that describes many different types of concepts. And one of the concepts are physical objects, like walls and slabs. Um, but it also describes the geometry that can be associated with those objects. It describes the properties, the materials, but then it also describes things that are more specific to our industry. Because so far, objects and, and um, uh, I guess geometry are, is something that other, that there are already other agreements out there. You know, there are other standards that do this very well. Um, but IFC also talks about concepts like construction planning. It talks about um, scheduling or, or costing and quantity takeoff. It also talks about legal liability. It lets you assign roles and responsibilities to BIM objects. It also lets you talk about design strategies and uh, uh, both legal and uh, informal constraints or objectives of the design. And that can be linked to, um, uh, uh, to, the, to the model as well. And it, and it also has data which allows it to be used for structural analysis, energy analysis, lighting analysis, and 
as, as you can see here, we're, we're covering quite a lot of topics and there's many, many concepts in each one of those fields. And uh, at the moment, IFC is trying to describe, um, I guess, all of it, which is a huge mammoth task. Um, and, and uh, it, well, it's a work in progress and we're getting there slowly as, as an industry. I understand. So, uh... Yeah, let's go through this uh, introduction to IFC. Yeah, so um, I guess when you, uh, most of people, they interact with IFC through an IFC file, and this leads to a few misconceptions. So they, they, they see a, a file that says, uh, which has a, a name like uh, mybuilding.ifc, and somebody sends them an IFC file. And when they look at that, they think that IFC is a file format. And this is one of the most common misconceptions with IFC. It's not a file format. Um, IFC itself is simply a set of agreements of information which can be stored. Mm -hmm. However, there is an additional set of standards saying, by the way, if you want to describe these objects, these concepts, in a text file, you can do that and you can call it .ifc, but that's not the only way. So for example, um, if I start a, a new model here and I'll open up this, uh, just a test model. Okay, great. Now, what I can do is export this to it, oh, there, there we go. I'm I've got bugs in, in my stuff, so I'll just turn turn a few things off. That's what happens when you demo with um, your development machine and you're halfway working through something. <laughs> no problem. Uh, let's... So if I go and export this file and I open it for the text editor, you can see that this is all IFC data stored in a text file and it looks a certain way. And we won't go into the details of how it looks, but it's got a lot of really technical looking stuff and it's got numbers and it's got you know, uh, capital letters and stuff, but it's not the only way in which you can have IFC data. There's alternative ways. So for example, if I wanted to export, let's see if this will work. This, but instead of calling it test.ifc, I'm gonna call it test.ifc JSON. Mm -hmm. And now if I open it, you can see that the file looks totally different. And this is all under the hood, this is all technical stuff. But at the very least, you can see that this does not look at all like, um, like the one on the right. Both yes. of these look totally different, but they all are both IFC. They both store data and the exact same data. The data on the left and the data on the right is exactly the same data. Just formatted However, differently. It's just formatted differently. And one is better for certain technologies and another is better for other technologies. Mm -hmm. So what this means is that uh, when people say, oh, IFC is a file format and, uh, you know, it's, 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 Maybe they think it's difficult to use, or they think it's big or small, or can only be opened by certain things, or it doesn't work on the cloud. That Those are misconceptions by people seeing it as a file format. But if you see it as a set of agreements, this data can be used uh, as a huge file in a binary form, compressed, uncompressed, on a server, on a cloud, on your desktop, on your phone, uh, sending bits of data, sending entire models. It doesn't really matter. It's just a set of agreements. And how you use a set of agreements, whether you use it to describe just a couple things, like um, maybe a single material and nothing else, or you use it to describe an entire building, uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's the freedom and flexibility provided to you as a user. So I've got a, a few formats um, that IFC can be stored as, so IFC is one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an IFC zip, and this is simply a compressed file of, of the IFC. Uh, there's XML and JSON and HDF and uh, SQL, SQLite. Now, 
as a user, um, this should not really concern uh, most users because this is purely different ways for computers to talk to each other. Uh, and, and that's not really what users are concerned with. But it's important to understand that IFC is a bit more than a file. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, computers can talk directly to each other using uh, talking the IFC language without ever touching one of these files, for example. There's, there's qu uh, quite a few. Uh, um, if, if we break away from that mentality of um, all, our model must live in a single file and realize that IFC is actually is nothing about that, um, I think we can start seeing how a, a, a set of agreements about how to describe objects is, is so important to open BIM. Yes. Maybe that makes a bit of sense. Yes, yes. It makes lots of sense, actually. Uh, can you please go back to the main page where you have, uh, before you came here? Uh, so where, where is the, um, the content page where you have the, uh, the mini lessons or the mini, yeah, here? This one's okay. here, yeah. So an introduction to IFC is the entire page. For, uh, where, yeah, where you one. click? including IFC yep. class, I see IFC class there. It's leading to the same page or it's a different page? That would be a second page. So this would explain the details about uh, what IFC classes are. Oh, okay. Then let's go back to the introduction page. I thought that uh, that introduction page has more than that. So that's why I asked. Cool. Yep. Uh, IFC classes I see there. What is an IFC class? So remember how I said that IFC has many concepts? or many objects or things that it can describe. Mm -hmm. the, the word, the, and this is just technical jargon. The, the, the jargon that IFC uses to describe a concept is called an IFC class. And now this, is, this might seem odd to, to use the word class, because, um, but it makes a little bit more sense if you understand that class is actually a, a common word in software development, and it has a lot of meaning in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why IFC stands for Industry Foundation Classes. But if you don't have a background in software development, don't worry about it. When we say IFC class, all that means is an object or a concept. And so, for example, IFC wall is a single object or concept that can be described using IFC. Uh -huh. Building is another one. A task for construction scheduling, for example, is another one. And every single class can have attributes associated with it. So, for example, as, as exactly as it says here, an IFC wall can have a name attribute. And you'll notice this. If I open up this file, you can see that, um, let's see here, we have a, a type. So. So this one is a project class, and the project class has a name, and it has a name that uh, has a value. And there are many, many other classes. So if we scroll down, we'll come across another class. Here's a class that describes a type of wall, which is standard, mm -hmm. standard wall. <laughs> that makes sense. And then we have a, uh, a base slab, uh, uh, sorry, a, a slab type class, or, which has an attribute that has the value base slab. Over here, all of these capital letters, every single one of these is an IFC class. And so each IFC class describes one concept. Mm -hmm. So this one describes the concept of a direction. This one describes the concept of a project. This one describes the concept of a document, a, an attached document, and so on and so forth. So there are hundreds and hundreds of classes in IFC because it can describe so many things. And, and, and one by one, Building Smart has come up with these, these classes. They said, all right, we need, a, we need a way to describe walls. Okay, we'll, we'll create an IFC wall class. And walls must have names. Okay, good. Oh, and slabs must also have names. And uh, one by one, they build up a, a hierarchy of classes. And... Um, a whole group of classes that people can use to describe their buildings. Mm -hmm. And there are certain rules of how those classes can connect to one another or what data they can store. And 
I guess being uh, using IFC does require some knowledge around when to use the right IFC class, if if that makes a bit of sense. Yes, yes, it makes a bit of sense, at least a bit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um, who actually who who is using this kind of classes the most? Like in the in the designer as designers, who uses most this kind of data? Okay. Um... I'll, I'll try again. Um, whenever you create IFC data, most nice. of the time you're doing it through an application. So I'm browsing here and I'm creating objects. And when I press the import or export button or the save button or, or do something with IFC, automatically the application will decide which IFC class, will create a whole bunch of IFC classes storing a whole bunch of data. Mm -hmm. And so it will actually do this without you needing to um, tell it to do so. However, as a user, you get a little bit of influence over what types of classes are used. So for example, um, whenever I create a physical object in a building, we are, uh, the, the software knows that it needs to create what's called an IFC product class. And that IFC uh, product will store that object. However, I can tell this, the system, actually, I want you to be more specific. I want you to create an IFC wall because this is a wall object or this is a slab object or this is a column object. And so most of the time, the first time somebody sees a class in IFC is when they assign objects their uh, class, their product class. So for example, I can call this one a um, slab. And you can see when I click this drop down, there's a whole list of IFC classes here that I can use to describe things. Mm -hmm. And if instead I wanted to create a, um, a different type of object, so here, here I'm doing and creating individual elements. But what if I wanted to create a particular construction type? Here I, I have even more classes. I can say this is a particular type of roof. Or if I wanted to create uh, a type of space, I can select from this list. I can say this is a building or a story and so on. So there's a bit, there are some um, influence the user has. So for example, if I'm, if I'm grouping a bunch of objects, how, why am I grouping these objects? Are they a uh, part of a, a mechanical system or electrical system? Are they part of uh, a group of assets? Or are they a series of uh, spatial areas which are grouped into a zone for building energy analysis? So as you can see, when I click all these dropdowns, there are just so many uh, different classes which, which I can see on the screen here. And um, knowing what's available, it's a bit like a... Um, I guess like at, at a restaurant, you have a menu, there's so many things you can choose from. And if, and if you want a certain, uh, and, and knowing what all the ingredients are, you can put them together to, um, to construct your data. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. If you go back to, to the page, to the browser, is there anything else we missed here? Because we are running out of time in three minutes? <laughs> Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, the summary is, um, open BIM is basically the way we should be doing BIM. It's about storing that data in a way that complies with standards. Um, one of the common standards which you can follow is IFC. IFC is a set of agreements, which uh, describe a series of concepts. Each one of these concepts is known as a, is known as an IFC class, and some examples are things like walls, buildings, and I guess tasks. Well, thank you very much. I learned a lot, and I'm looking forward to our next next session. Okay, me too. <laughs>